Okay, ready for the next one? We're basically twins, aren't we? You can't tell us apart. No, uh, I don't know. I think I'm better looking. Anyway, so, on to cranial nerve three. So, cranial nerve three, the ocular motor nerve. We are binocular visioned creatures, i.e. our vision is going straight out in front of us. As a result of which, if there is an imbalance in the muscles that control the eye, then that binocular gaze gets lost. And that's when our double vision occurs. So when we're doing the cranial nerve 3 examination, it actually pairs up with cranial nerve 4 and 6 all in one assessment. And what we'll do is we'll draw an eight-pointed star in the air and have the patient follow that with their eyes. Now there's two things that we're looking for. One is for the patient to say whether or not they've got any double vision. So very slight movement away from their binocular vision. But we are also going to be looking to see that the movement of their eyes is nice and smooth and that we can't see any clear issues with binocular vision loss. So once again, if we strip away the outer layers of the eye, particularly the eyelids, then we can see the outer four muscles that are attached to the eye. So we have four muscles around the outside, which are going to be vital for turning the eye in and out, up and down, and also allowing it to rotate around ever so slightly. So, just going back over those muscles of the eye, we have superior rectus on the top, then pulling away and around to the side, we have the superior oblique, lateral and medial rectus, pulling the eye laterally or medially, and then we have inferior oblique going round and lining the socket, as well as inferior rectus going behind and underneath, pulling the eye down in opposition to superior rectus. Understanding what is going on with the cranial nerves and how they help the eye to move allows us to be able to work backwards from any abnormalities that we see. We should expect the patient to be able to follow our eight-pointed star without seeing any double vision. If they do, we want to see where they're getting that double vision and if we can see an abnormality of their gaze as we do so. For example, cranial nerve 3 means that the eye will rotate down and outwards. This is because lateral rectus 6 or cranial nerve 6 will pull the eye outwards, that is its um, action, but if the cranial nerve 3 to pull the eye up and medially have failed, then it will be pulled down by superior oblique from cranial nerve 4 and pulled round by cranial nerve 6 from lateral rectus. Does that make sense? So if the two here, keeping it in balance that way, fail, then it has to go in the direction of the remaining muscles. And I think that's a crucial thing to understand about the eye. The eye is held in position. There's a balance between all of the muscles of the eye. And if any of those fail, then it will be pulled in the opposite direction from the, dire from the way the failed muscle works. Not only that, but we will get an idea of where the double vision is to indicate what's going on with the cranial nerves. Cranial nerve 4, for example, can be very subtle in um, being identified visually. However, we tend to get double vision in the vertical gaze if there's a problem with cranial nerve 4. Whilst cranial nerve 3 may be said to have the eye looking down and out, Cranial nerve 4 problems are considered to be the dejected palsy because the patient will turn their head in slightly and also angle downwards in order to be able to compensate for that double vision, dragging the eye back into alignment. Similarly, we know that cranial nerve 6, controlling lateral rectus, important for moving the eye outwards, will give double vision if there's a problem when the patient tries to look outwards and can't. So for example, if the right eye is affected, has a lateral rectus or sixth cranial nerve palsy, that eye will be pulled inwards and when the eye on the opposite side tries to look across, 
you will not get the movement, hence you'll get double vision in the lateral gaze. Right, now we need to look over how your eyes will move. So if you keep your head still for me, and I want you to follow my finger. And tell me if there's any double vision at all. No. Any double vision? No. Okay. Any double vision? No. Double vision. No. Any double vision? No. Any double vision? No. Okay. Any double vision? And the last point up there. Any problems with that? Yeah. Excellent. So